there was a Twitter hashtag that was going around, and I'm sure you've seen it. It's hashtag quarantine life. And people would tweet in 140 40 characters or less things that were happening in their family that was different now that they were in quarantine, now that they were you know, put in their homes and not being able to go different places in March and April and June and July and May and October and November and even in December. So this perennial during this year hashtag has gone around and so people post photos of themselves with messy hair or cooking breakfast for their kids for the first time or doing this or that household duty in their pajamas or doing a Zoom conference call where they only have their sh suit on on the top part and they got their pajama bottoms on or their fuzzy slippers on and hashtag quarantine life or our kids using our um, uh, furniture as a jungle gym, hashtag quarantine life. Dad waking up and just rolling out of bed to go to work at the desk that's only two feet away from his bed, hashtag quarantine life. But this hashtag it's funny because no matter how messy or even people have said, I haven't taken a shower in 14 days, hashtag quarantine life. You can imagine the stench. You can imagine the laziness. You can imagine the difficulty that these people experienced and each one of us experienced during quarantine. And as we continue to experience this irrational fear that's going on throughout the United States and in the world, we recognize that this isn't what we're meant to live. We're not meant to be quarantined. Man is a social being. Man is called to a dynamic of interchange between persons, between the dignity of the human person and my own dignity. There has to be a correspondence to how God has planned me to seek out love. And the family, the family, my family, is the will of God for my life. And it is the privileged setting in which I learn to receive love, to take love, and to give love. And that hashtag quarantine life can be dangerous because it can enable us to become lazy especially when it comes to love. Because if you loved yourself, you'd take a shower, whether people saw you or not. If you loved yourself, you would be cooking breakfast for your kids as much as you could, depending on the circumstances of your job and family. If you loved your kids, you'd be playing with them already, not just waiting for quarantine, so that then I got nothing better to do, so I better play with my kids, or I better take time to take them outside to watch them, to see what they're doing today. And this is a cause of frustration within families during this quarantine because I don't know what to do with my wife. She's right here all the time. I don't know what to do with my husband. He's got nothing to do. I don't know what to do with these kids because they're driving me bonkers. Hashtag quarantine life. But ultimately, we are destined for something more. We are destined to be in communion with one another, even within our nuclear family. We are meant to pay attention to one another, to give and receive love in our own nuclear family. Because as Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI said, the family is a necessary good for peoples, an indispensable foundation for society, and a great and lifelong treasure for couples. Abraham and Sarah had Isaac, and he was a symbol of the covenant that God made with his people. And we, even more so, celebrate the Holy Family, who is the ultimate nuclear family, the ultimate ideal for us in our family life. Men take St. Joseph as their patron. Women take our Blessed Mother as their patron. And we both must focus on their child, Jesus Christ, God made flesh for our salvation, to sanctify home life. And we forget that, that the first place, the first thing Jesus sanctified was the home at Nazareth. 
Of course, maybe you could make an argument for the manger in Bethlehem, but that wasn't their home. They were in exile. In a sense, they were in quarantine because their family and friends didn't want them. But he sanctified home life, and he did that for 30 years, 10 times more than he was a social being. He was out ministering to God's people. He spent 10 times as much time with Mary and Joseph, sanctifying home life because he knew that we needed that example. We needed to know when our brothers and sisters get on our nerves, when school gets difficult, when my husband or my wife gets on my nerves and I don't know what else to do. I've got to turn to the Holy Family. I've got to turn to my patrons, St. Joseph and our Blessed Mother, to show me what is the way of love in this situation, in that situation. Can you imagine Jesus, Jesus, the Son of God, being curious enough as a kid to ask his mother, why do you take old cloth and sew it to my clothes? Why wouldn't you take new cloth and put it on my old clothes? And Mary explaining to Jesus, Jesus, my son, if you put new cloth onto this old cloth, when you wash it, it's going to tear the old cloth and it's going to make your clothes worse than they were before. So that's why I go to the market and I find used clothes, the goodwill at Nazareth, to find used clothes so that then I can patch your clothes so that then they won't tear any more. And then Jesus, many years later, using that same analogy in Matthew chapter 9, he says, No one puts a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment, and the worst tear results. You mean, wait, Jesus saw that analogy from his home life? Or what about our Blessed Mother showing him that when you make a loaf of bread, you've got to keep some back because you need a starter for the next loaf to create the leaven so that then the bread will rise. Our Blessed Mother washing a cloth specifically for that purpose to cover that bread as it leavened and rose. Jesus recalling this at the feeding of the 5,000. Mom, thank you for teaching me. I know what, this, it, what it is to hunger. I know what it is to have bread rise. So I will perform this miracle because these people are road weary. They are hungry and we don't have food. So I give you thanks, Father, Lord of heaven and earth and go and distribute these bread, this bread and these two fish. Or even the diligence of work in St. Joseph's workshop how beautiful that is to have Joseph showing Jesus how to plane wood, how to sand wood, how to craft it, how to build a structure. Working with his hands, those tattered, probably cut hands of Joseph, calloused from toiling on behalf of our Blessed Mother and St. Joseph. And how Mary, when Joseph would come home, would look at those hands and say, those are my hands too because the two have become one. In that mystical marriage of Joseph and Mary, her hands, those immaculate hands, identify with the work and diligence of her husband. Because there is nothing in family life, there is nothing in the ordinariness of life that is not sanctified by the Holy Family, by their example, and by Jesus Christ present in a family. He had cousins. He knew what it was like for them to fight. He knew what it was like to call for forgiveness, to seek to reunite family and friends. Why? Because he used it as a parable that I take over my heart. The prodigal son coming back, he knew what it was like to go for people to go and squander their living. He probably saw it saw people running away. He saw tax collectors putting a couple shillings in their pocket, the denarius in their other pocket. 
So that's why he knew when the widow went and put in her two small coins, he knew as God she had put in more than all those other people who had given from their surplus. She gave everything because she gave with great love. And where do we learn love but in the family? Where do we find that example of the Holy, the holy Family is our great example? And that's why Pope St. Saint Saint Paul VI said, Nazareth is the school where we begin to understand Jesus' life. It is the school where we begin to get to know his gospel. Here we learn to observe, to listen, to meditate, to penetrate the mysterious depths of this simple, humble charming manifestation of the Son of God again among men. Here we learn to, perhaps without realizing it, to imitate their life. Go to Nazareth. Go to that home where the Holy Family resided for so many years. Joseph having his workshop down the road, diligently crafting things, working on behalf of the Blessed Mother and St. Joseph, earning a living by the strength of his hands, by the industriousness of his mind, by the diligence of his work. Your kids learn that from you. Your kids learn what it means to be a woman, what it means to be a man, true man, true woman, as God intended it. They learn it from you. And if the quarantine allows you to be lazy and cut corners, we're not doing it right. We must be Christian more. We must recognize that now we are in the hiddenness, the silence of Nazareth. We unite ourselves with the Holy Family, with Jesus for 30 years, who we don't know what he did. The Gospels don't record those 30 years. He was silent. He was diligent. He was industrious. He was loving. He was caring. He gave of himself to his family and friends quietly. And most of all, the gospel does record in today's gospel that he went home and was obedient to Mary and Joseph. God, if we could learn obedience like Jesus, if we could learn from Mary and Joseph how it is to be obedient, and as you heard today, I wish I could learn how to sing from them. My God, that would be a savior, a saving grace in my life. But he would. Jesus learned how to sing the Psalms from Joseph and Mary as they went to the Feast of Tabernacles, of Booths, of Weeks, and of Passover. They would make that journey to Jerusalem singing Psalms, singing songs of praise, singing the kingly Psalms to praise God as their King, their Savior, their rock, their refuge, their comfort in times of trial and difficulty. Where did Jesus learn that but from Mary and Joseph? from his nuclear family, the holy family. And so we must realize that a Christian home must be an imitation of the house of Nazareth. It must be a place where there is plenty of room for God. Let me say that again. Your home, my home, this place right here, this chapel and St. Joseph's Novitiate and Assumption Hall must be a place where there is plenty of room for God. Plenty of room for God. And that means diligence in taking a shower and brushing my teeth, in getting up and cooking for my brothers. That means me cleaning up after myself. That means me cleaning my room. When nobody else is going to go into my little domicile, my little Nazareth, it must be clean. It must be ordered. Why? Not for my sake. For God's sake. Because I want to imitate Joseph who had every tool in every place, of course. Otherwise, how are you going to find it? Or how would Mary find it when she needed a screwdriver? Just joking, obviously. But our blessed Lord sanctified this home life. So there has to be plenty of room for God in our life. And we must not allow the stinkiness, the sullenness, the lukewarmness of sin to enter our family. Otherwise, we will be living hashtag quarantine life. We will be sick, not just dirty on a natural level, but dirty inside. But praise God, 
that the Lord who knew forgiveness, the Lord who gives forgiveness, the Lord who loves forever gave us the sacrament of confession so that we might not be stinky. We might take a spiritual shower. We might be renewed and refreshed by the love he has for us as much as we want. Praise God for that. Because otherwise, our families get pretty stinky, pretty dirty, and pretty gross. Because there's no room for God in the midst of uncharitable activity, in the midst of hashtag quarantine life. So in our families, let us pledge today as we receive Jesus, the body, blood, soul, and divinity, the one who learned how to bake bread, gives himself as the bread of life. Says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life within me. I am the bread come down from heaven. I will give myself for you. And as humbling and as unworthy as I am, I say those words, take this all of you, this is my body, this is my blood that is given up for you, shed for love of you. This blood of the new covenant, this bread of the new covenant, this is what we receive. Jesus Christ incarnate, Jesus Christ, his body, blood, soul, and divinity so that my family might be sanctified through my example, through my love, through my forgiveness. It's got to be. It's got to be. Because unless you take up your cross and follow him, we don't have life. We can't be his disciple. It takes sacrifice. It takes difficulty. It takes effort for us to pay attention to our kids, to put down the can and go and play video games with our kids. It takes a lot for us to get up off of the couch, hashtag quarantine life, and go and serve our brothers and sisters. Go and clean the schmutz off of the mirror in the bathroom to go and do the laundry. Absolutely. But you're in good company. Because St. Joseph, our blessed mother, and our blessed Lord, who gives himself and nourishes us, has done it before us. What a great gift. What a great, tremendous gift. What a grace of God, a free and gratuitous gift we have that we can sanctify each other by giving and receiving love. And that's hashtag Catholic Quarantine Life.